I want to start by thanking Auntie Anne for her very generous welcome to country and to also acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on tonight, to pay my respect to elders past and present and to acknowledge that this land was never ceded. It's wonderful too to be here with so many friends and so many sisters and I want to acknowledge all the feminists in the room. <laughs> Many of us know Me Too as a hashtag that went viral globally in 2017, a moment when millions of people, the majority of them women, used those two words to say that they had been sexually harassed or sexually assaulted. The hashtag Me Too was shared 12 million times on Facebook alone in the 24 hours after Ashley Judd first used that hashtag to talk about the film industry. But of course, that's not where the story starts. 71% of Australians have been sexually harassed at work. One in three Australian women will be a victim of domestic violence, and one in five Australian women will be a victim of sexual violence. Don't tell me that if any other thing were causing that sort of injury and death, we wouldn't be taking action as a community against it. Even knowing those statistics, watching the flood of tweets and Facebook status updates was truly shocking because for some of us, it was the first time that a friend, a relative, a work colleague had disclosed their sexual harassment or sexual assault. The insidious thing about sexual harassment and sexual violence is that for so long our culture has taught victims to be shamed and to be silent, to bury what has happened to them. When survivors are shamed into silence, perpetrators are protected. When millions spoke up, that shield of silence was shattered. That glaring spotlight on the pervasive nature of sexual harassment and sexual violence was an important moment. It made it clear around the world that the stories that women had often told each other quietly and privately were not occasional isolated incidents, but a deep and widespread problem. It wasn't just bad, one bad boss, it wasn't just one awful workplace, not just one country or one occupation. Everywhere, all the time. Women stepped up to take on the enormous number of stories about assault and harassment in the workplace striving to hold the abusers accountable. But Me Too didn't start in 2017, and the work of Me Too didn't stop when the hashtag stopped trending. As the founder of Me Too, Tarana Burke, said, a moment is not a movement. Me Too is a movement, not just the moment that brought it to worldwide public attention. And of course, it's also a work in progress. We still have so much to achieve. That extraordinary viral moment created an opportunity to advance the movement, the movement to support survivors, to help them find justice, to create community action, to build a world without sexual violence. The movement that so many of you in this room have been part of for years, if not decades. So I pay tribute to those in this room who've done that work, dedicated their lives to helping end sexual violence and sexual harassment, to helping people find the resources they need and the justice they deserve. In a country where one in four women and one in 10 men has been sexually harassed in the workplace in the last five years alone, 
and only 17% made a formal report or complaint, the importance of this work is undeniable. You are part of a movement to make our workplaces, our public spaces and our homes safe. Both moments and movements need extraordinary leaders and we have, we have several of them here with us tonight, including the woman I'm delighted to be introducing, Antoinette Braybrook. Braybrook. And I'm so looking forward to hearing from Tirana and Tracy later on. Antoinette has been the CEO of JIRA since its inception 17 years ago. She's the chair of the National Forum. And JIRA is a Victorian Aboriginal community controlled organisation specialising in working with Aboriginal women, mothers, children experiencing family violence. It provides culturally safe legal and case management support as well as delivering early intervention prevention programs. Antoinette is widely recognised around Australia and internationally and it's my great pleasure to introduce her tonight. Thank you. Thank you. 